I V M. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to ask everyone for a quick favor. We're running a brand survey right now and would really appreciate it if you could let us know what you think about the advertising on IBM. Go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and do let us know. As part of this, we'll be selecting 10 random participants and sending them some IBM swag. So do fill out those surveys. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach. And today we're going to be talking about travel. You know, the world is opening up again. People are so excited to get out of their homes, go back to the adventures, go back to traveling. We've been stuck at home for so, so, so long. And this is something that I keep getting as a request all the time saying, you know, what are these interesting places that you keep going through, right? All the trekking and stuff like that. And I thought maybe we should have somebody to guide us on how to start thinking about travel. It's not travel during the pandemic. It's not one of those kinds of things. It is about understanding The passion of travel. How can you do traveling without a group of people? How can you solo travel? So with us, we have Garima Pandey. And I recently met her at 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 an event that I'd gone to in Himachal. And we had such a great time discussing travel and the interesting things that she does. So I thought I should have her on the Habit Coach podcast. So Garima, welcome to the Habit Coach podcast. Thanks, uh, Ashton. And surely we had a great time in Himachal a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I run Wandering Jane. Wandering Jane is a travel platform for solo female travelers. The idea of Wandering Jane when, when, I, when I started this about five years ago was to make solo travel seamless for women, uh, to also ensure that locals make enough money and there is enough fulfillment on both sides. And in some way, as travelers, we try and reduce our impact when we travel. So th- that's, that's Wandering Jane and that's what uh, I do. But Garima, tell me, how did you get into, you know, traveling as something that became a passion or was it always a passion or why do you call yourself a traveler? Uh, well, very interesting. So uh, I, I don't come from a travel background, by the way. I um, I studied engineering. I, I did my MBA, worked in a bank. So a very typical three idiots case study, if I may say that, um, kind of, you know, spent about eight, nine years in, in finance and in fintech. Uh, I loved what I did. So I'm, I'm quite an accidental entrepreneur. I don't have very glamorous stories of how I got to be an entrepreneur. I just, I just thought there is a need gap in the market and uh, more and more women should travel. Uh, to answer your question, uh, both my parents love traveling. I remember as, as a kid, uh, you know, I was, I was just like kind of packed up and every weekend we, you know, we would do something, we would go somewhere, we would head out to a safari or camp somewhere and, you know, do crazy things. And uh, I guess it just became, I'm not sure if it can be qualified as a habit, but I think it just became a part of my system, you know, to just do something out of my comfort zone, learn something new and, and travel. Um, yeah, so I think I think I've been I've been uh, you know as a kid traveling. Interestingly, both my parents were in the army, so uh, you know adventure or traveling or exploring new places came very naturally to me. Uh, you know, initially maybe I was forced at even doing some things and trying you know crazy things and rock climbing and rafting somewhere, and then I just started enjoying it. So that's that's how I got into travel. You know, so you know when we think about travel, right? Mm-hmm. There is the touristy kind of travel. And then there's the kind of travel that you talk about, right? Which is like solo travel, adventures, etc, etc. Now, do you think there's a different mindset between these two? Um, Certainly. So, you know, travel, if you you pick up any book and you pick up any quote and, you know, you'll find all these really glamorous or really over-the-top quotes about travel being someone's life story and travelers are storytellers and traveler the, the one who's traveled is the most learned and we've been we've been hearing all those things and um i, I certainly think it's true uh, but i think the way people travel should change i don't think you know it should be driven by a fad you know don't go to a destination because it's most popular don't do an activity because five people have written a blog about it and there are three vloggers you know who kind of covered it for you uh, i think if you figure what you like to do and you know what what you enjoy doing travel can be travel can be very very fulfilling 
uh, anything you do which is fulfilling, you know, I'm sure has, you know, there would, there would be psychologists who would back me up with this. And, uh, you know, even we have travelers who would come back and say, Garima, I'm, I'm feeling like a better person. I'm feeling more confident. Uh, I'm better at work, um, you know, and, and these are kind of just things that that you pick up when you travel. You know, you, you learn to be humble when you're interacting with the locals. You have a local meal in a place. You'll, you, you'll have all the gratitude in the world kind of come into you. And, you know, these are kind of things which forcefully in our big city life we are trying to do you know we are trying to journal gratitude we are trying to uh, force ourselves to live in a certain way live simply eat uh, healthy and you know i think once you travel these are these are some habits that you pick up uh, you know along the way so you know um whenever we talk to people right like if i could give you a magic wand and i could tell you you could do anything with it about 80% of the people say i want to travel Right? Why do you think travel is such an intrinsic part of our human behavior right now? Well, I think I think it's it's what what comes of it, you know. So a lot of people want to travel today, and uh, I think I think you know if if as a business person, if I may, in so many years, you know, there is per capita income that has gone up. Uh, people have more exposure. Uh, as children, when we were growing up, and um, I, I grew up you know, with both my parents in the army, it was a typical service class uh, sort of setup that we had. Travel to us meant going to our grandparents, you know, in summer vacations, learning something new. We would always pick up new skills there. And, and that that became exciting. You know, as, as kids, we would look forward to it. And uh, I think as, as grown-up adults, we have the money, you have the paying capacity. We all want to look for new experiences because it it sort of creates curiosity it makes it, re- it rejuvenates you it makes you feel good about yourself it makes you interact with other people it gives you newer ideas about your business it makes you more humble um, you know a lot of people i know you know for a fact because everybody is working so hard and they want to travel even to reward themselves so there are there are many many sort of reasons uh, you know that people travel to and uh, i think at the end of the day what everybody is looking at is certain fulfillment. You know, they're looking at travel to, uh, they're looking at travel as a magic wand, if I may, you know, turn around what you just said, you know, to sort of change something, you know, to get out of a situation, to get a fresh perspective, to heal from whatever they are dealing with. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's, that's primarily why people are traveling and why it's become um, such a big deal. Uh, I would also say that maybe, I, I know there are, there is a lot of debate on, travel is a fad and you know people are just traveling because everyone else is traveling that may be true and if that's the first step that you know let's say everybody's trekking and everybody starts to to trek and goes for a trek and registers for it but once you go there uh, you know that that's that's when the magic begins right that's when people realize what that is and you know they may have signed up for an event or they may have signed up for uh, a trip without any sort of maybe in a in a fad manner or just sort of aping somebody else who's cool and doing it but once you go there you know that that's what it brings to you all all that you're looking at in terms of rejuvenation humility and whatever else you know it'll do its magic on its own so um you know, you were talking about fads, right? And very recently, I started seeing a lot of this solo women traveling, right? And solo traveling. Now, I'm not calling it a fad, but it's something that is new and it's picking up. So what is solo travel? Now, now let's talk about solo traveling in depth because it's something that I don't think I've ever done. And I'm curious about it. Yeah, sure. So, well, um, um, I think, you know, like I said, everybody is looking at, uh, travel to to do something to them. People are looking at travel as a magic wand, as an escape, as a healing mechanism, as as ideation and all of that, right? Uh, I think to do that, uh, one has to center, you know, himself or herself and then sort of explore, which is why it's picking up. I think, um, uh, you know, it may be overrated to be honest. You know, some years ago, if people went for a drive alone, or a ride alone, or for a movie alone, you know, would have would have got the stairs and said, "Oh my God, are you crazy?" Leave aside that. If I was, if I with a with a full fledged DSLR would turn it around and click my own picture, people would call me crazy. And today we are calling it selfie, and that's the coolest thing on earth, right? Um, so I, I think I think that's that's what travel is. It's just something which is so personal. You know, it is personally moving you. It is personally healing you. It is personally making a difference to your life. It is making you confident. And uh, and that's why, why it's picking up, because people are realizing that they have the freedom to do the kind of things that they like to do, not follow an itinerary that five other people in the family or five other friends and not be any, not, you know, there is no peer pressure, there is no... Um, 
sort of entertaining other people you're just by yourself and and that kind of fulfillment and that experience uh, is heightened you know anything that you do is is heightened uh, anything that that you consume there you know uh, goes with so much more fulfillment than it would otherwise so it may to be to be honest maybe it's maybe you know at some point it's it's got you know the kind of attention because five other bloggers are doing it or somebody wrote about it but like i said once once people you know kind of indulge in a solo travel trip it can be very very fulfilling for people it can be life changing for people uh, you know you explore your own skills which which otherwise you would never do so like if somebody wanted to start solo traveling right what are the starting points for them to start thinking of like are there should you start thinking of destination should you start thinking of duration should you start like let's take them through step by step on how should you go and plan your first solo trip right first i would say it's it's uh, don't expect too much you know there are there are so many people who would not enjoy solo travel so let me just go ahead and say this right like solo travel is not for everybody there are there are people who may end up feeling lonely they may end up feeling alone it may be counterproductive to what you were going for and that's the truth you know it is not so don't don't try and um you know in order to be cool or in order to sort of be in that bus that everybody is on don't don't expect solo travel to do that to you once you have that cognizance and you know that what you want and what do you like to do i think solo travel will be simple why i'm saying this is because you know when you read something that oh my god the solo trip i spent 15 days in the himalayas no network nothing and it changed my life it may not change your life you know go with that expectation so have that clarity as to what you like to do right um and that would be my step 2 understand what you like to do so when we when we craft solo trips you know you could go to the same place let me pick up the most popular destination for any indian goa right you could you could be someone who likes to party in goa you could be someone who loves to explore churches and love you know loves the the portuguese culture you could be someone who's a food person and you can go crazy in goa and explore food you can go crazy with adventure you can cycle around um you know the riverside we we conduct uh, you know we host trips that you know you could just cycle around all of uh, you know the history of goa you could be someone who's deep rooted in art and craft and you know and go on paintings and tiles and you know you could you could sort of explore that you could be somebody who's only looking at adventure and is kayaking and is doing stand up paddle you could surf in goa you could scuba dive in goa and that's what one destination does right so when you have two days all of you don't have to go and party in goa all of us don't have to go and surf in goa you can find what you like to do so i would say more than the destination being the leader in terms of i want to solo travel um to find out what i like to do is is very very important you know i know for a fact that you are a trekker and you're a mountaineer and your destination i think i don't know i i may be i may be wrong and maybe you can correct me if i'm wrong um i think what leads you to the next trip is where am i hiking you know what hike am i going to do how challenging is it going to be is that trek different than the last one that i did you know and i think that should be that should be step to to say that you know i want to know what i like to do and then i'll find the the interest place the interest first and then the destination right um definitely definitely book a homestay there is and it's it's a misnorma to understand that homestays are too basic or they are unhygienic absolutely not you would find anything from basic to ultra luxury in homestays or in a local stay interact with the local if you're not staying at a homestay make sure that you interact with the locals make sure that you've signed up for things which are very very locally driven you know it could be adventure related it could be culture it could be food but do something which is which you know the local folks are doing there because that learning that kind of experience is going to be with you for the rest of your life you know so if i uh, i'm not going to talk about a goa story where i went and i partied in four places i will tell you a goa story where i went and i stayed on a boat and i did yoga for four days that's a cool story and that's more fulfilling for me also right so um so find out find out something that people are doing there locally uh, definitely definitely indulge yourself in a local meal um, um i mean there is a lot of science behind emotions and locals and i'm not going to go about it but i think there is a lot of science about locally you know prepared meals and local fresh foods and they are experts and all of that you know talking about it 
And um, uh, yeah, and I, I think I think once you have that covered, I would also say in most of our solo trips, you know, um, we ensure that about 60% of the trip is planned because uh, a lot of solo travelers go at a destination and it becomes very overwhelming for them to find these people to do these activities or find, uh, you know, where to stay and how to go. And I think half the people who have a bitter experience in the solo travel is because they go very unplanned. Um, um, I don't know, for some reason, it sounds great to go unplanned, but I think I would say plan 60% of the things that you're doing and don't plan 40% of the things that you're doing, you know, go and explore, be, be on the move, be on the flight, take some decisions there and I think I think you'll have a great sort of solo trip carry things that you like would be my last things like you know if if you if you like reading do carry a book if you like music do carry music uh you know don't try and do what others are doing you know okay if you like to talk to people you want to FaceTime with your family in the evening show them where you are do that if you want to switch off switch off so there is no you know don't try like do what you like to do a solo trip is supposed to be about you and what you like to do and not what what you read somewhere or what someone else did. We're going to take a quick break. See you on the other side. Hey, everybody. It's been a great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Advertising is Dead, Varun talks to Paul Ravindranath Ji, Program Manager, Developer Relations, and Head of Google Accelerator for India. They discuss the startup ecosystem and how Google is enabling innovation through this program. On Shunya One, Sheila Dathya and myself talk to Abel Joseph, founder and CEO of IO. We discuss how IO is a truly Indian dating app. It's not so much as a dating app, it's a matching app. It's a really interesting conversation. You should definitely check that out. On Postcards from Nowhere, Utsav uncovers the hidden injustice in India's languages and how it shapes the way we travel and interact with people. On the Life Manifesto, Zarina debunks leadership myths that are popular amongst people. And on Kail Niti, Rajiv Mishra, Nikhil Chopra and Ayaz Memon discuss Australia winning the T20 World Cup. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, do check out our various YouTube channels. You can catch them on IVM Podcast slash YouTube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors on the network this week. Cred, Bank of Baroda, Quarter, Coin Switch, Kuber, Play Coffee, Intel, and Oxfam India. Thank you so much for making this possible. Welcome back. Let's jump into the conversation. You know, that's so hard, yeah, Karima. Finding out what you like to do is, I think, part of the adventure itself, right? Yeah, because, absolutely. Because that's what travel teaches you. Travel teaches you about what you like. So the whole thing about trekking is yeah. that I hate planning. And I hate coming up with uh, doing the research for a destination that I'm going to. So for me, trekking is damn simple, right? I land from the airport and then somebody takes care of me till it's time to get me put, put me back on the aircraft. So that's why I like the trekking bit. But, um, but you know, it's so interesting. You suddenly realize that maybe you're not a mountain person. Like maybe you are now a beach person. And your preferences change as time goes by. I think it's very, very interesting how that happens as well. And that happens all the time, to be honest. You know, so uh, when we are planning, there are, there are some suggestions that we will make to a solo traveler, um, uh, you know, to say that, okay, you know, understanding what you like to do, what kind of work you're doing, what kind of people you're interacting with, you know, let us suggest that you do something new, which is not something of, of your interest. You know, for instance, very recently, there was a lady who was going to Pondicherry and we said, you know what, you should try your hand at surfing. You will love it. And she said, oh my God, I'm scared of water. I'm not sure. And we had a conversation. We said, it's, you know, it's, it's an activity. You don't like it. You don't like it. Just try that. You know, there is someone locally, um, you know, who's going to take you through it. And um, she comes back from the holiday and she says, I want to go and how can I learn this sport? I want to, I want to take up a course here. So you're very right. You know, I think, like I said, you know, if 60% of the things are planned, you're settled, especially in your first solo trip. And of course, if there are seasoned solo travelers, they, they could do like really crazy things with their time. But if, if the first trip, 60% is planned, the 40% leave it up to things that, that you never imagined you would do. And you do that, you, you would, you would be surprised that, you'll pick up a new habit from there. You know, you'll probably, we have so many people who've gone and done a horse riding somewhere and have come back to their cities and said, I want to sign up for a horse riding class immediately. You know, this is what I want to do. Or, you know, traveled, um, we recently went for an event, you know, which which had a run in, involved in it. You know, there's so many people who would come back and say, I want to start running now just because I signed up for that event, you know. So, yeah, these these are these are things that happen all the time. You you pick up a new hobby, if I may say so, not a habit. I think that's a proper word for it <laughs> once you travel. So, you know, Garima, there's this um, thing about coming out of your comfort zone, right? Stretching your comfort zone, breaking your comfort zone, doing all of that. Now, when you're planning your solo trip, 
how much of breaking of comfort zone should happen how much should staying of staying inside comfort zone happen like according to you what is the correct mix of this oh that's a very interesting question so i would go back to the first thing that i said that you know understand that it's a first solo trip it could be it could be an overwhelming experience for people it could be um it could be underwhelming as well but it's a solo trip you're just going to explore so in terms of comfort zone i would say like i said you know so when i said 60 40 that's what i meant you know if you are if you are going to do um if you're not and it depends it i mean of course this is not like a, a you know like a gospel for everybody but i'm just saying this is not a recipe for everybody but for most people um who are not sure if they want to travel solo the 60 40 mix works you know where 60% you're in your comfort zones so you're in control and you're not anxious when you're on the trip you're not always um, you know you're not angsty you're not worried uh, and these are kind of things which can which can kill an experience in a new place you know you may be doing the best thing on earth there but your anxiety and your fears can sort of take over you know what you're experiencing there so i would say for a first time solo traveler and if you're not the kind of person who is in general um uh, you know not the kind of person who in general is comfortable getting out of a comfort zone i think 60 40 works you know when i mean that in terms of a working professional if someone tells you hey what you know guess what for one month you can do a new role if you're not that person 60 40 works you know if you are that person who says okay fine give me anything i can try this today and that tomorrow when you are you know so so sort of you know involved in this whole gig economy go crazy you know go go 90 10 i, I mean 90 go unexplored and go 10% plan but i think for most people given the kind of number or given the kind of people that we interact with i would say the 60 40 works for 99% of the solo travelers in in all the years that we've operated you know because the the 40% allows them to explore allows them to be unplanned and and you know sort of do something new and different out of their comfort zone but the 60 you know gives you that comfort but when i mean comfort zone the step that you're taking to take a solo trip is any way out of your comfort zone you know it is not something that you've done before you're not used to not um, uh, you know sort of talking to people um, every day or you know sharing all of that and and especially when you're on a solo trip you know you perforce interact so much with local people you will you learn from other people you will hear other people which you would never you would just be within your circle and doing the same thing when you meet new people it's just it's just very very um interesting for everybody to you know kind of explore ideas and themselves as well can shy people or introverts do solo travel most certainly in fact they ace it uh, <laughs> you know i think it's for everybody like i said you know but um so you know for instance we have a couple of homestays where um uh you know where where people like you and me really have left the big city life and have started something very interesting in the hills um uh, uh, you know you could you could just sit by a book next to a river side if you don't like to interact with those people if you like to interact with those people you will have the comfort of talking to them of sharing things with them or of uh you know talking to them i know so many women who said that you know i'm i'm a shy person i'm an introvert and have come back made friends and now we are planning trips for you know that that lady and the new friend that she made on on the trip you know so um i i think these are just these are just traits you know that that people have and like i said you you'll just explore new things about yourself which probably you had no idea you could you know you could have or you could do so solo trips solo trips from men versus women is it different what are the things that i as a guy should be like focusing on or what is it as a person who's listening who's a woman what should she be focusing on that's such an interesting question and i think any question which is gender driven in our country is <laughs> is is always is always um, you know such an interesting question but um well see technically they are not different but um let me tell you how it is different in terms of a mindset you know if if um, um, and that's a fact right like maybe 5 years ago if if a guy went solo for 15 days it would be it would nobody would question and that's exactly why i started the business because the roadblocks for a woman to say that i'm traveling solo in terms of a societal roadblock is is a lot and that roadblocks also plays on on my mind you know if five people are telling me it's not safe for you to go uh, do you not have company you know is everything okay in your marriage uh, you know do your friends not talk to you anymore and these kind of things i can unhear but at some point it mentally plays down on on everybody and that's the fact of it you know um everybody will cross question on safety um you know would would tell you really terrible stories about what happened in that place and will pull out a news article from 5 years ago i'm not sure if 
an average Indian man, when he decides to do this, has to go through this or not, you know. So I think in in terms of in terms of what what travel will do to you or what that solo trip will do to you or what you should do there, there is no difference. But I think before the trip, there there are all these roadblocks which kind of change expectations and kind of make a woman underconfident to go solo, you know, so that ang- that anxiety is already built in before even stepping out of the house. Um, Can you take you us know, through how to break those three, four things? So for example, one on safety, one on oh, is your marriage in trouble, is your this, etc, etc, etc. No, because these are so important things, right? Yeah, like, yeah. why are you going by yourself? What's wrong with you? Like, you know, like, you to- tell me okay? I would easily come. Like, no, no, no. I want to do this by myself. How... Can you arm us with probably the right answers that you've heard of over the years on how to deal with these? So I'll tell you how how a lot of others dealt with, you know, so initially when we started the business, you wouldn't believe, you know, we would even have, even have, um, you know, a 30 something year old saying, can you talk to my parents and and convince them that the place is safe? And, uh, and we said, no, uh, you know, that is what you need to do. So how can one empower, one is be, be well read you know, know where you're going. And we equip everybody with, with enough information. They don't have to find nobody, nobody needs to spend time and you wouldn't even find relevant information. So one of the first things we tried to fix is who is sending you there and who is making this trip for you? Is this somebody who's sitting in an AC office, who's Googling along the site to say, oh, you want to go to this place and I can build an itinerary and give you there? Or is that somebody who stays there? So I think one of the first Things that we try to fix is that all our trips, all our experiences are are created, led, executed by someone who's based in that city and that or that town or that village or wherever else. And that makes a world of a difference because any information that you're getting, any kind of question that you may have, and no question is a silly question when it's your trip and when it comes to your safety, um, all of them get answered and get answered in the right way. You don't get any kind of empty um, promises and, you know, you don't get, you don't get a, you know, a different vision. You get exactly what you, you know, you know what you're paying for, you know where you're going. And I think that's the first thing everybody should do. Find out where you're going, find out where you will stay because that will make you more confident, right? It's it's any one of us, even if, even if I have to try a new restaurant and I know that uh, I'm allergic to hundred things, that's the first thing I'm going to do. You know, do you, do you use these ingredients or do you not? It's so simple. So do that. And I think that helps. Um, Secondly, hear, hear real stories, you know, something that our travelers uh, sort of use to empower themselves are stories of real travelers. So when they, when they read some of the reviews and uh, they spoke to them as well, they got so much confidence in terms of how did they manage, you know, and, and I think, I think the more confident you are when you're telling somebody, if you ask me, Garima, why are you going for a solo trip? I can, I'll be confident. The moment my confidence is shaken, you can't expect the other person, whether it's your parent, boyfriend, husband, sister, mother, to say, okay, fine. I know you are underconfident, but you'll be fine. So build build enough armament for yourself. Know the place. Know, um, find out what you're doing. Have a plan. Uh, I think, like I said, I'll, I'll say this again. I think half the reason why solo trips go wrong for people are because there is a notion of going completely unplanned. Uh, you know, all of us work hard. We get 15 days of holiday in a year. If you go to a new place and six days, you're only spending to find out planning and unplanning and changing things. It, it's going to, it's going to kill your experience. It's a no brainer, right? So um, yeah, I think plan, know the place, find out a local link, which is what, um, uh, you know, we help people do. And once you have, once you have all of this information, you know, you be informed, you know, I, I think, I think once you're informed, you're confident. And then all of this just becomes noise. All of this just becomes something that you will go back and say, you know what, this is, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is the person I'm staying with. And this is the social proof. This is the address proof or whatever else they need, you know, and we provide all of that. And I think, I think once, once people are informed, everything is a cakewalk. I really think that's, that's, possibly the only fix, you know, you can't change mindsets. And for some, um, and and to be honest, for a lot of right reasons, these concerns from from parents, boyfriends, husbands, wherever is, 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 is something which is stemming from 
statistics of our country, you know, which are not which are not wrong, which are not incorrect. So if somebody is talking about a crime rate somewhere or crime against women, it's a fact, you know, let's not deny it. Let's not be in that bubble saying, oh, I'm an empowered woman and everything is safe and everything is great around me. It is a fact. The point is, how do you deal with it? You know, what information do you have? Are you cognizant of it? Are you are you aware of the place? And everything falls in place, you know, everything falls in place in terms of what mode of transport should you use? Who should you go with? Where should you go? What should you eat? What should you wear? And everything becomes very, very simple if you're informed. So be informed, get the right information down, be confident about what your itinerary is going to be like, right? Yeah. And then that's the tool or that's the armament that you need to deal with people and all the questions yeah. that you get asked before you even leave for the place. Absolutely. And get someone local to do this for you. Mm. You know, uh, if I have been to a place five times, you know, um, I, I still wouldn't know the place as of today in, in terms of real time. So get real time information, make sure that there is a local uh, person who is making this itinerary for you. So, you know, when, when we do these things, we make sure that a local our local experts are 24 seven available, you know, and we connect uh, those local experts with our solo travelers so that there are no surprises. There is, you know, I mean, and everything is taken care of, right? There could be a medical emergency, there could be a police emergency. And I'm not saying these things uh, happen often they don't uh, quite honestly but that confidence that you know if there is something I would be taken care of is is good enough to to sort of deal with those things so all of this information should not be consumed via a blog which is five years ago it's great use a blog to inspire you know to get inspired to do crazy things um, and and all of that but when you are going on a trip make sure that there is someone locally based there who's curating experiences for you. So the big things that I've taken out from this is that one, the local aspect is very, very important. So making sure that you interact with locals, making sure that you understand the area that you're in, spending time with them is critical. So which is why your first suggestion of staying in a homestay as a solo traveler is a brilliant idea because you're going to be staying with a person who knows the area and life there. The second part was planning, 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 planning. Right? It makes a big difference the more you've planned and the more you've understood it. The third is manage your expectations, right? Make sure that, you know, understand that sometimes it's going to be awesome, sometimes it's not. But figure out what it is that you want when you start thinking about solo travel. Don't do it just because you saw an Instagram post. Let the Instagram post inspire you, but figure out what it is that actually floats your boat. Maybe being on a ship for two weeks is not something that might excite you as much, right? I know so many people who hate going on a cruise and then they think that, oh, you know, they might actually enjoy it. But the whole idea is figure out what it is that you want and then go after it. Karima, yeah. love it. Karima, how can people get in touch with you? How can people start this conversation with you? So, well, we are, uh, we have a website, www.wanderingjane.com. Uh, all the coordinates are there. We are, of course, on Instagram by Jane Loves to Wander. We are on Facebook, um, Wandering Jane. So if you type out Wandering Jane, even on Google, uh, you would get to us. So I think that's the simplest thing because people, I think, don't remember numbers. They don't remember websites, but go Google Wandering Jane and you can reach us. Um, yeah, we are, we are available all the time to craft any kind of solo trip, customized trip, whatever else for you. And travel is all about experiences. Go experience something that you've never done before and it'll change your life. Lovely. Thank you, Garima. Thank you. Thanks, Ashton. All right. So that was Garima and we were talking about how to start your solo travel journey. In the next episode, we're going to talk about how to find interesting places that you can visit. How about finding, you know, offbeat locations and how to really understand about going local. So join us for the next podcast. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Ashtin Doc on Twitter and Instagram. You can find lots more information on my website, awesome180.com or check out different content on my YouTube channel called AWESOME180. That's Awesome 180. Usually in a podcast, it's me who speaks to you and you who listens. But I've been seeing your comments and it's time. It's me listening to you. Following the overwhelming success of this podcast, the good folks at IVM Podcast Network have decided to come up with a Kannada adaptation of the show for those who prefer listening to it in that language. Do make sure you let your Kannada speaking friends know about this as well. 
Have you ever wondered where the business world is headed? How the ways in which we create, market and sell to consumers will evolve? Or if we'll ever go back to wearing pants while working? For answers to all of this and more, tune into Advertising is Dead with me, Varun Dugirala. Every Tuesday, as I talk to entrepreneurs, leaders and change makers from across business, media, marketing and beyond, you can catch all episodes of Advertising is Dead on the IBM Podcast website, app or wherever you get your podcasts from. <laughs>